Rajon Rondo. Who's that? Uh, he plays point guard for the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers, next to possibly one of the most famous, well, definitely one of the most famous human beings on the planet, um, LeBron James. And, uh, you know, Rajon's a good friend of mine, and, you know, he's agreed to uh, come on board and not only, you know, leverage his influence a little bit, but also bring some other influencers on board. Awesome Inc. presents the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame, a show that highlights how people throughout the Commonwealth of Kentucky pursue their definition of awesome through entrepreneurship, technology, and innovation. Hey guys, I'm really excited you're tuning in today. We have another really awesome episode coming up. We're sitting down with Mac Wilkinson of Moolathon, which is our newest fellowship company. So we're super stoked. And real quickly, you'll hear from Mac about what Moolathon is. But before the episode, I want to give you a quick uh, insight into what they do. So Moolathon is a social fundraising platform and fitness tracker. Essentially, they just wanted to help people get fit and help people raise money for a cause. And again, we all want to be more healthy. And so Mac has a passion and that's where his passion and his purpose align. So tune into this episode. I'm pretty confident that you will enjoy it. Thanks so much. Well, hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. Again, we are always excited when we have a new fellowship company come. We have Mac Wilkinson from Moolathon in town today. Don't know why I did that, but it felt right. Uh, Mac is a great guy. If you ever want to play him in a one-on-one, he's pretty easy to beat. So get ready. Put on your put on your Jordans. It's not true. I know it's kidding. (laughs) Uh, But fun fact, uh, Mac, we met. What we met a year ago, you mm-hmm. came. Absolutely, you dominated at Five Across. You were in the Five Across finals last year, mm-hmm. and you've been doing a lot of solid work since then. So, real quickly, why don't you tell everyone who's listening in what you do, what Moolathon is, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream, and yeah, just how life is. Let's get to know you a little bit. Great, great. Well, I am Mac Wilkinson. I am the CEO and founder of Moolathon. Moolathon is a social fundraising platform that's built on a fitness tracker. It enables businesses, groups, teams, charities, and individuals the ability to raise money for a cause through the pursuit of a cause that we can all relate to, which is getting fit. So the app actually works in two ways. It works in one way for individuals that are trying to raise money for a cause with the miles that they actually run personally. And it works in another way for nonprofits, charities, groups, basically anybody that's more than one person that's looking to expand their fundraising reach with virtual events. So uh, individuals create a campaign with a 30 second pitch video, 500 characters of text. They share that with friends and family via social media and email. And those people wishing to contribute pledge a dollar amount per mile limited to a maximum number of miles they set. Then you go out and you run a little bit and uh, you earn a little bit more of each of those contributors pledges. So, and then if on the other side of things, you know, for entre- for nonprofits and organizations, uh, they can create a virtual event and allow people to run anytime, anywhere. You no longer have to ask people to show up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday on their off day and then give you 30 to $50 and then go home with a t-shirt and a smile. So, or what a lot of people are doing nowadays are those, those color run type races, you know, you're, you're decked out in paint, you got to yeah. shower and get all the jazz off. So yeah. I get that, uh, man. What's funny is you did not break eye contact one time as you were saying that. So yeah, <laughs> I wonder, yeah. how many times have you said that to people? Well, we've, you know, been lucky enough to be in, uh, you know, a couple of pitch competitions and uh, we've put ourselves in some situations, some conferences where we've had to, well, I say we, well, I have had to, uh, you know, present the company quickly. So I'm used to communicating it and it's almost robotic at this point. No, I love it. It's all good. (laughs) Yeah. So again, uh, tell us how this idea came about. You know, you have a pretty cool background that if you want to feel free to talk about your athletic background, but again, when you hear this, you think, okay, well, you know, there's stuff like Kickstarter or, you know, fun runs where, yeah, where did this idea stem from? What motivates you to figure out how do we make this become the next fill in the blank? Yeah, that's actually a little bit of a long story. I mean, I don't know if you want me to get into my background. Hey, if you want to, feel free. We got time. But I'll just tell how the idea came about. 
Um, and how the idea came about is a uh, feature that's not actually in the app initially, but it's coming soon. Okay. So uh, running with my running partner on the Big Four Bridge in Louisville. If anyone's from Louisville, nice. I'm sure they know the Big Four Bridge. I'm not sure you guys do. Oh, so well, guys I'm do. actually from Louisville. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't so know, I know that. there all okay. the time. I prefer to go, especially at night when, I, when it's light. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. So I'm running on that bridge, and uh, my running partner says to me, I wonder if I write my, chalk, my time down in chalk. We ran the same route every day. He's like, I wonder if I write my time down in chalk at the end of the bridge, if I can get other people to start doing it and, you know, kind of get a list. And uh, at the time, my other, my nephews that were in town uh, were off the uh, Pokemon Go craze. You guys oh, remember oh the Pokemon? And they had those virtual gyms. Man. And I was taking them around and, uh, you know, you, we would go to one of these Pokemon Go gyms and there'd be 10, 20 other kids, you know, walking around with their phones, capturing invisible Pokemon. And uh, the parents, the rhetoric was always, look, the kids are getting outside and everything. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, yeah, but they're not doing anything, right? So I love the idea, <laughs> though, of this, this virtual gym that, you know, people had to interact with through the app and, you know, still interact with the real world. Um, so that was kind of on my head. And when my, when my running partner said that they wanted to write a list of times down, I kind of, it kind of all clicked in. And I was like, wow, what if there was a place where, you know, there was a virtual start point? and a virtual endpoint, and, uh, you know, there was a leaderboard, like an app, so you could see, you know, everybody who's ever run here, how their time is ranked. Well, I thought that idea was great, got excited about it, and when I went home, I found out that I was fulfilling a niche in the fitness industry that I didn't realize, a hole in the fit fitness industry that I didn't realize was there, which was real-world comparables, right? So, most of the apps that are out there right now, they allow you to compare self to self or self to peer, right? So I can see how I did versus last week versus last month, last run, but I can't really see, or I can see how me and you can be friends. Um, yeah, and, what you know, the goals we can are, see yeah. what the goals are, but I'm 6'8", 250. Um, yes, I said my height and weight on here, but I'm 6'8", That's, six, eight, that's two, so impressive. I wish I could say I'm 6'8". <laughs> I'm 6'8", 250. How I run a mile may be completely different to how someone else runs a mile. So um, by having everyone run the same distance, same start point, same end point, you're not only able to see how you rank against everyone, but you're also able to see how you rank against those of a similar age, of a similar height, of a similar weight, and you're able to get these real world comparables. The problem with this was when I had the idea vetted, my idea was uh, having geolocational advertising mm -hmm. as, a, uh, as a revenue stream, and it quickly became apparent that I would need a quarter million users for this to, to become financially viable, right? And it just so happened that I was luckily talking to a guy um, that was kind of mentoring me through this who sat on the board of several charities and who was organizing 5Ks. And he was talking about how difficult it was to organize these 5Ks and how much of a headache it was, et cetera, et cetera. And it just kind of all clicked that, hey, I've already figured out how to monetize distance anyway, right? Um, why not have these virtual 5Ks, you know? Um, but then I just had to figure out a business model to it. And then I yeah, got I more do. into crowdfunding and uh, yeah, I mean, that's cool. I just went down the rabbit hole down that way. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's always cool, you know, hearing people's stories cause there's always a route. And again, you, you found a problem for you. It sounded like you kind of stumbled into it then realized, Oh, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's cool that you were able to come up with the creative solution that's relevant mm -hmm. to, to solve this. And actually uh, I love that you brought, <laughs> that you brought up Pokemon go. Mm -hmm. So I remember when that first came out, uh, I was working at a program called Governor Scholar Program here in Kentucky. Okay. I was an, I was an RA for two summers in Moorhead, and I just remember, uh, again. So I, as I was on staff, you know, we're how we have perimeters. You know, we have other families, kids in our in our watch, so we got to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And all these randos were just walking over with their phones out, like, "What are they doing? <laughs> Go find out they're, going, like, they're playing Pokemon Go, right? You know, and then you hear about some of the just the weird pe places people end up. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of funny that you. This all started around that same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So the, I, that, that craze definitely cool. was uh, sort of the seed that kind of yeah. sparked all. Well, this that's cool. Uh, sure. If you were a Pokemon, do you know what you would be? Oh man, I don't even know the names of all those Pokemon characters. <laughs> I got such. I tried to avoid all that no, stuff. I, I have. I, I have four nephews from Atlanta <laughs> that come in every summer and they spend like three weeks with me. And uh, yeah, there's no way I could keep track with all those Pokemon. No, and I stuff. love it. Yeah, I know. Actually, oddly enough, my roommates they still that's part of their childhood. So whenever it kind of surges back up, they always get really into it's it. It's amazing how, you know, it went from, you know, cartoon to game and then they started doing movies and, you know, even with like angry birds, I always thought that was amazing how like, you know, they go from a small, simple app 
to now they're a huge movie franchise and you know yeah. those type of things. It, so, it is cool to see how that yeah that, yeah that trend goes. So Mac, let's uh, take it back a little more towards what what you're doing work wise. And again, the cool thing about being an entrepreneur is you are in the thick of solving real world problems daily that a lot of people will never even think about. So maybe what is one thing you can share with us that you've learned from customer discovery, figuring out, hey, so in the fitness world, you know, there's this opportunity that's being missed, you know? So I have a Fitbit, you know, I get weekly weekly emails that say, hey, you know, you burned this many calories, this many steps. Mm -hmm. You did, uh, like you said earlier, you did this better last week than this week or, you know, vice versa. Uh, and with relevant places like gyms, you have a personal trainer. You can see the growth of progress. What is something that you've learned as you've been building Moolathon out that has just been a completely missed issue for either the industry or the people that you have been, you know, interviewing, you've been sitting down and learning from maybe some investors who, like you said, you met someone who was running a lot of charities that was also organizing 5Ks. Mm -hmm. What is some of that information you've learned just from talking with them that you've been trying to solve? Well, I tell you what, one of the cool things, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I really want to build a, a fundraising platform, a fitness and fundraising platform. And one of the cool things that I found out, like in my customer discovery, whether it's talking to nonprofits or whether it's talking to individuals, and one thing that's really felt good is, to me is, you know, how many different people instantly find different uses for the app and uh it's sort of like you know the whole airbnb thing you know that guy he wanted to rent out you know air mattresses he never envisioned that people would be buying homes to place them solely on airbnb as a revenue stream and becoming entrepreneurs and hoteliers um, off of his platform and that's sort of my goal for Mulathon, especially in talking to all these different people is that you know the platform is so solid and it's you know such a feel-good approach to fundraising that I can't even imagine how you know someone is going to be using the app in the next two or three years and to me that's a great gauge of success um, is if you know people are using the app in creative ways that I never even imagined yeah I would imagine that's, so, that's a big win that's cool yeah. man mm -hmm. uh, so again you're building a team out. Can you tell us maybe who's on your team, what that that's looking like as you guys are moving forward? Uh, you just, again, highlighted some success for you that, you know, imagining two to three years how people could use this in ways you never imagined. That's mm -hmm. super exciting. Uh, maybe what's another way or that you get pumped about what this can be or what is something that possibly keeps you up at night? And I know I just asked four questions at once. Yeah. So I'm going to say that all <laughs> again. Uh, yeah, tell us about your team, who's on it, what do they do? Maybe another thing that really excites you about Moolathon uh, and then a fear, you know, what is something that continues to keep you up at night that once you finally solve it, you'll be able to sleep easy. So I'm very fortunate to have some influential partners in Moolathon. Um, my director of influence is Rajan Rondo. Who's that? Uh, he plays point guard for the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers next to possibly one of the most famous, uh, definitely one of the most famous human beings on the planet, um, LeBron James. And, uh, you know, Rajan's a good friend of mine and, you know, he's agreed to uh, come on board and not only, you know, leverage his influence a little bit, but also bring some other influencers on board. Um, another guy with some great influence that's on board with us is Nazi Muhammad. He's an 18 year NBA veteran. Um, he's really great because he has his Nazi Muhammad Foundation and he's got roots from West Ghana and in Chicago and uh, his foundation raises a lot of money for you know back home in both places so he can certainly really cool. go for those places home um, and athletes are natural you know sort of uh, you know target audiences and target influencers for Moolathon anyway just because most of them have foundations they most of them want to give back to the community and uh, Moolathon is a solid platform to incorporate and inspire um, fitness amongst others while raising money as well. Um, I've also got great marketing team, uh, Sam Stamper. Um, he's been with me. He's sort of our marketing extraordinaire. And, uh, you know, we just hired a new developer. Um, we were originally, we had some of our development coming from overseas and uh, we're happy that we've got two local developers now. So um, that's cool, man. Keeping it Kentucky, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, keeping it Kentucky. Actually, our I'm from Louisville, so I travel up here. But our developer is one of our developers is from Louisville, who's like sort of our junior developer. But our senior developer is from Lexington. Okay. So thank yeah. you. Keep it awesome. Yeah, Mac, I love that. Again, you're keeping talent here in Kentucky. You are a proud Kentuckian and building a sweet business, and we're excited for you. I know you got a jet because you're super busy, and I'm glad that we got to sit down. Last thing. Again, as an entrepreneur, we want to help one another out. We want to help people in our community. 
What is maybe one bit of advice that you've learned over the, the time that you've been building Mulathon or the one thing you wish someone would have looked you in the eyes and said, Mac, <laughs> over the next year, you need to know this. I think the biggest thing is to execute, right? I think a lot of people have ideas and, um, you know, some of them are good ideas. Some of them are bad, but, uh, you know, definitely get your ideas validated and definitely execute. So many people have good ideas that they do not execute on. And, um, you know, doing this and, and being involved in so many pitch competitions and, and getting to know so many different entrepreneurs, uh, you know, some things that you think aren't the greatest ideas, you know, who would think that people would, you know, drive around and, you know, pick up strangers to earn extra money? You know, it sounds like when you, you know, the first people that heard that were probably like, you know, it's crazy. Well, we know that because they got plenty of no's. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's definitely no matter how crazy you think your idea is, is to, to get it down on paper, to validate the idea and to execute for sure. Awesome. Mac, mm -hmm. I cannot wait to watch you execute over the next year. I love it. Get on out of here, man. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Peace. All right, well, that's it. We want to say thank you again so much for checking out the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame podcast. Special thanks to Lee Rosevere for the music that you hear in the show and to Lexington's Awesome Inc. for hosting us from their space. Again, I'm Garrett Farbach. Make sure to check back and tune in next time. We'll see you then.